Hello, I hope you're doing great. Today, we are going to talk a little bit about what you need in order to be prepared to work with Maui Blazor. As you may know, Maui Blazor is currently on preview on .NET 6 Preview 6, which is the latest preview version of .NET uh, 6 at the moment, as far as I know. And Maui Blazor will allow you to use a lot of your Blazor development skills on cross-platform applications. So basically you will be able to create applications for iOS, Mac Catalyst, Android, and Windows using your Blazor development skills. Basically HTML, CSS, and your knowledge on the Blazor syntax or Razor syntax, right? Now, before we continue, please remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and invite more people to subscribe to the channel. Also, like the videos and share the videos in your social networks Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. Okay, so things that you need to consider before you do the Maui Blazor application. Okay, if you want to succeed creating a really, really good Blazor, uh, Maui Blazor application, and if your system is actually really, really big, you will want to reutilize or reuse most of the functionality you already have, right? So, what I will show you in here is the code for Fairplay 2, the next generation of video sharing portals. It is open source and it is on GitHub for you to see it. The video is on the link is on the video description. Okay, so this is a Blazor Web Assembly system with a .NET Core hosted API, and we added additionally the starting or the beginnings for the maui blazor application right so we have a couple of things the web api which is basically at an ASP.NET core project right uh, enabling the blazor web assembly we have the client project which is the blazor web assembly application and we have the two Maui Blazor applications or projects. This is the Maui Blazor that has the uh, mobile devices configuration, and this is the Wing UI uh, project that utilizes a lot of the things in the Maui Blazor project by using link files, right? That's the default of the Maui Blazor. Uh, projects at the moment okay now the thing is that when your system becomes really really big as Fairplay 2 is already uh, already is because it has a lot of code currently you want to minimize or you may want to minimize the code duplication or the unnecessary code duplication right so in order to do that the one thing that you have to do is take advantage of the blazor components remember that pretty much everything on blazor is components right but what you will need to do is create a separate project which will have your shared components that will not have application logic. They will only have data um, parameters to assign them the data and render, right? right? Or in the case that you need additional logic, inject an interface and in your main project, uh, startup.cs, you will map the interface to the corresponding uh, concrete type, right? Okay, but 
the UI components in theory, you need to avoid uh, having those components invoking logic and you want just to have those components receiving the data and have your logic to get the data or process the data somewhere else, right? And if your component is a component like an upload component or something like that, I'm sorry, give me a second. Sorry about that. So if you have a component like an upload component and that component needs to perform an action like the upload, right? The OK. And that action will, and if that action will actually be different depending on what is using the component or the application that is using the component, what you will, what you will want to do is having those actions being parameters too, right? You can receive an, an action delegate or an event handler. You will want to use an event handler better than uh, than an action handler, than an action delegate. And then the consumer of that component will specify the actual action that will be performed. Okay, so let's see that a little bit in action. So this is the Fair Play 2 client project. And as you can see, we have a dependency to the components project. The components project or components project has things like the video list. The video list only receives the videos, some parameters, and injects the video client. This is an exception because we need to get the edit token when this is being used for editable um, editable insights in the system. It's for it's for doing that, right? But in theory, you should avoid having to do that. But we did this because Otherwise, we will have to do that for all of the thing, all of the um, videos, and we don't want to do that. But you could also uh, inject like an action or something like that that the consumer will specify how to do this. Okay, so this is the video list, which is a shared component. That shared component is being used on the index page or yeah, in the index page for the Blazor Web Assembly application. You see that it is somewhere around here at the end, right? But that component is also being used on the Maui Blazor application in the index page. So you see that in the index page. We have the loading component and the, oh, the video list component. We have some of the logic to retrieve the data. We get the data and we assign it. Now, you could even go further and reutilize your pages, but that will cause you to move your Blazor WebAssembly pages into a Razor class library. And you need to be careful if your um, components or pages uses things of the Blazor Web Assembly, of the Blazor Web Assemblies, because that will not work on the Maui Blazor as far as I know. We tried and we got a lot of errors. So that's why we duplicated a little bit the code to retrieve the data, but we are reutilizing the component. So basically the only thing that we are duplicating is the code to retrieve the data. 
Okay. Now, the other thing that you will want to know is how to use Azure B2C on your Maui Blazor applications, right? So, the usual approach of using the scripts, it may, uh, we tried and it didn't work. So, what you will want to do is doing something like this. So on your startup.cs, you will duplicate a little bit the injection of the services, right? So yeah, you put the assembly name, whatever you want, right? You specify the, you add a scope, you add the HTTP client with the names. Remember that in our application, we are actually using uh, a service that uses the HTTP client factory to retrieve the authenticate or authorized client HTTP client and the anonymous HTTP client, right? So we inject that. Now, one thing that you will need to do is um, Blazor, uh, Maui Blazor does not have the base address authorization message handler. We actually didn't find it. And when we did an inspection in here, in the Blazor web assembly, it turns out that this is part of one of the web assemblies DLLs. And we don't want to have the web assembly DLLs on our Maui Blazor applications. So what you can do instead is just create a class with the same name or with other name, right? But you will put it as the message handler. And basically what you need to do in here is overwrite uh, Not in here, sorry. In here, in the Maui Blazor project, what you will want to do in here is, well, of course, it needs to inherit the delegating handler, and you need to overwrite the send and the send async methods, and you will invoke a method to add the authorization token. This basically will set the authorization better or whatever you are using for authorization and you need to send the access token. We are currently setting or storing the access token in a class of type user context when we log in. We are having the login process in the main layout. So in the main layout, we added a, uh, a button. So when the user is not logged out, no, is not logged in, we show the button when he the user clicks the button, we invoke the on login click. And the on login click has all of the logic to um, connect to Azure Active Directory Business to Consumer to show you the pop up to log you in. So I am going, yeah, uh, the first, pro this actually, I copy it uh, from one of the Microsoft samples and actually from some I mix a little bit of multiple samples because things were not working with the approach of any of those so I have to mix a little bit both um, it is actually working now one thing that you will have to do with this implementation is you need to go to your Azure business to consumer uh, registered client application and you need to enable the public client and you need to add the mobile platforms, right? That will allow you to create the URLs. Actually, one other thing that you need to do is modify your startup.cs uh, No, not the startup.cs the program. Give me a second. I can't remember where I put that. So in the app. Okay, yeah. On the app.saml, 
you will need to assign the instance for the public client application. You create the application and you need to do this with redirect URL and you pass the redirect URL that you get when you are creating the platforms or adding the mobile platforms in your Azure Business uh, Azure AD B2C client application, register client application. Now, we, I was getting an error when I was using the HTTP that uses localhost. I was getting uh, an error indicating that um, redirect is not allowed for non uh, HTTP um, redirect is not allowed for non HTTP when using a B, uh, web view. Right, so what I had to do was just convert it to use, uh, just use the uh, URL that it is marked with MSAL, right? And that actually eventually did it and fixed it. So let's continue seeing this. So basically, this tries to do or to try try to authenticate you uh, using uh, the silent authentication if it fails because the MAUI UI is required you need basically it now uh, um, shows you the UI for doing the interactive authentication right and then when everything succeeds we are creating this we set the token we said this logged on through and the rest of the logic will actually work. So I am going to run this. The way I'm running it at the moment is control F5 for the server project because I depend on the APIs to retrieve the data, right? And this is loading the, uh, the API and there it is, right? So I'll move this to the other monitor. I'll move this to the other monitor. Then I'll mark this as a startup project. And let's see. I'll run this. We we'll wait for the Blazor um, for the Maui Blazor application in the in, for Windows uh, to load, and you will see that it will load the the homepage that is will actually retrieve data from the API that I currently have running. So that's all in the data and it already loaded the data, right? So now I'll click sign in. And when I sign in, I will get this um, pop-up, right? Requesting my credentials. So give me a second. And when I sign in, it will reload the page and you see that uh, it showed me these uh, my videos. Now I can click on my videos and it will load the videos, right? You will see that now uh, if I go to this handler, that will be hit. And that will add the token that we have currently stored, right? That's the token that will be sent to the API to verify, uh, which is my user, right? Because it has the bearer token and uh, that's required in order to do all of the role-based authorization that we have. Now, I'm not really sure if this is a bug or not, or if it is that, or if it is due to the fact that Mavi Blazor is still on preview, 
but for example I have this page marked with authorize allowed only for users we have the user role but currently I don't have the role uh, my claims or my my user profile my claims identity they do not have any information on my roles in the Mavi Blazor application at the moment and this is always allowing me to see the to access this component or this page um, despite not having the permissions right I'm not sure if it's I am not configuring something on the Maui Play Store application or if it is that it is on preview or that it will work different somehow, right? The one thing that I did notice is that if I try to do something like this, uh, you see that here we have my out, out result. out result and if I do something like claims principal it actually tells me that this is not available for Win UI and for basically the SDK 10.0.90041 right so I'm not really sure um, if it's all part of that right or what's coming but uh, that was it uh, most of the application or of the things of the tests that I did actually were working I was able to retrieve the data which is something that I really wanted um, I was able to retrieve the data for the actual user because the token is being generated I was able to make the user login with Azure uh, Active Directory Azure ADB to see on the Maui Blazor application, so it goes well. I recommend you to go and try Maui Blazor. It's really, really good, uh, and you can reutilize a lot, a lot of the logic actually. And the other cool thing that you can do is you will be able to do interesting stuff like combining interfaces or UIs, for example. One thing that you will see in your um, Maui Blazor application is that the way they are, they work is you have like the startup.cs, right? The startup.cs tells who it, which is the Maui application, which is this a app, right? This app has the information of um, which is the main page for the Maui app, right? Which is this main page. And uh, your main page is the SAML page, right? But the SAML page is the one which has the ways or web view as part of the content page. So in theory, you will be able to do interesting stuff like uh, doing a grid or some other kind of layout to have your main application or minutes as part of the SAML application and, and the other section uh, having your Blazor web view, right? Uh, things like that. In theory, you will be able to do that. Uh, currently, I just have the Blazor web view, which is using the index.html and is using the main component, which is this main, main razor. And actually, I may know why the authorization is not working because this is a single router. So I take that, uh, but I believe the cascading um, I'll need to check that. But yeah. Uh, those are the things that you need to know for working with Maui Blazor, but and it's really good. I recommend you to try. Also, please let me know in the comments what are you using with Maui? What are you doing with Maui Blazor if you are already using it? Please remember subscribe to the channel and share the videos and like them.
Thank you very much and have a great day.